Let me just drop something. That must be hers. <clears throat> Usually I have, uh, usually I say I have a few unprepared remarks, but I have re actually prepared some remarks. Oh. Yes. Um, I'd like to quote uh, George Washington, who once said, ouch. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, who was famed for saying, is, are you going to eat them? And then, um, uh, what was his name? Oh, yes, Henry Ford, who once famously said, no butter on the toast. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. That's, from, that's from my book, uh, Anonymous Quotes by Famous People. Um, I'm going to introduce Abe Becker, though. Um, now, I can't remember where we met. Where did we met? Just here. Are you here? Oh, okay. Uh, I, I filled in for my friend. That's right. Okay. All right. So, what you're about to hear is, is, is a person who has very good delivery. I mean, everybody here knows what I mean by that, but this is something special about him. When I heard, heard him read before and when I saw some of the video clips that I looked in, in preparation for this evening, it was like a very interesting style and approach to the word and how it's presented. Um, the diction is, it, it, it forwards the cause of, of the uh, words, the way, it, the way he says them. There's also um, depth in there. He's he's performed with musicians. You've done slam poetry things and come come away looking really good. <laughs> so there's uh, several poems that he wrote. Well, at least a couple that I know of that he that he wrote about your dad. Those like just are amazing pieces. And there's other things besides those. He's um, like he has a good sense of humor and he's passionate and compassionate at the same time. So he's a passionate, compassionate kind of person. And there's a lot of soul in this voice. There's a lot of perspective. And um, rather than have me meander. No, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and on his fifth birthday. <laughs> it's like a week off therapy. <laughs> okay, well, no, I mean, it, 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 he's good. He's a, he's a good-hearted person. He happens to be a poet, and that comes through, and it's going to be a wonderful experience with us this evening. So please welcome Abe Becker to the microphone. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm reading uh, almost only stuff I've written in the last couple months. Um, so we'll see about that diction, <laughs> gymnastics, or whatever. Yeah, well. Um, also, so usually I would prepare like, uh, things in the order I would want, and I didn't do that. So I want to uh, try to respond to some poets I heard with, what I, with stuff that seems related. Um, the keynote. Uh, open with Eckhart Tolle. No. Is that Tolle? Tolle? I, I pronounce it Tolle. I yeah. don't really know how it's officially pronounced. Okay. Um, I we can Google it. This I I I, uh, I I wrote a poem called New Age Wisdom that I, I felt like responding with. <clears throat> I don't believe in good posture and noticing how bad you suck at breathing, aka meditation. <laughs> yeah, I know it works. I just don't believe, like, Republicans in science, or racists and racism, or me in Google Docs, or someone's finger up your ass when you orgasm, or, that's real. But when it comes to <laughs> New Age wisdom, it's real. When it comes to New Age wisdom, like being in your body, or trying to have a good attitude, how do those count as ideas? How is my general bitter score not count as a good attitude? Who decides? I don't care. I don't want advice. I want to commiserate with an alcoholic who's tried everything but the 12 steps. <laughs> or a deadbeat dad paying alimony to his conscience. You can see in the foot of his eyes zigzagging like his whole life is deep sleep. My training therapist who's not paid enough to listen to this mess. My parents I wish I saw as just doing their best years before my father's death. Derelicts belting karaoke in the street to instrumentals and their mentals weirdo fuck up prophets are my temple where I find home in awe and loss 
I never believed in much beyond kindness. Scuffed with bad sarcasm and polished death wish. Nothing more than a poet's next draft or a comedian cracking me up about what they can't laugh at. Not your guru or my Buddha nature. Just that we're screwed without our disgusting truths. I want someone to see me as broken as everybody I thought I knew and not go off on the limits of limiting beliefs. The flinch at my ugly, how affirming it is as we clasp hands and spin in circles, chanting our mantra, I am not okay. I am not okay. I am not going to wait for some yoga mat wielding ambassador to a new age of just being present. When I've been to yoga class, that was easily the most distracting place I have ever not just <laughs> masturbated. <laughs> Said it. <laughs> I haven't believed in friendships since I stood on the docks and watched the first fleets form and vanish in middle school. I never was a glasses half full kid. I always saw my life as shards scattered that justify my distance from me. Maybe I'm just a sucker for you tender assholes who never stop with your shit talking. I like to practice forgiveness when you act how I feel. It's about as close as I get to loving myself. Thanks. That's also the most fantastic thing I've ever written. It's uh, really fun. I had totally meditated like right before I came in here. Um, we can tell. Can you? No. Okay. Yeah, just joking. Good. Good. Yeah. But I, I just generally, uh, I, sometimes when you're going through it and someone has their simple solution that involves like levitating if you just try, yeah. you know, it's it's really a good idea for them to get out of the way of my this or something. It's how I feel and won't do anything about it. Uh, one other response thing. Um, you mentioned love and words and stuff. Um, and Valentine's Day, I think we can agree, is the worst holiday of everyone. Uh, here, here. Does anybody have a sweetie? I think Dan, yeah, right? Well, thanks for bringing that up earlier. That really was terrible. <laughs> any, any time I can help out, you know. No, I was really feeling okay about other things. Um, so this is called bedside lighting. I was trying to write a new fuck Valentine's Day poem, but um, it's it's not done. <clears throat> bedside lighting. This is after a poem by Diane Seuss called Jesus with His Cup. The lamp on my mattress, the lamp by my mattress on the floor where I sleep, is tall as I am standing and weighs more than all my waking anxiety. So tall I have to sit all the way up and hyperextend my arm to turn it off when I'm done reading a short story or masturbating. It wobbles ominously as I twitch its switch to its brightest setting and then off completely the way my mind won't, too scared of being lamped to permanent mush in my sleep. My ex's new lovers all have these personalized whittled basswood candle holders she blows out one by one like romance Santa, blows a kiss by each bedside and smoke and possibilities and lack of only need waft peaceful above their grotesquely attractive physiques. The first months after the breakup, I noticed the homeless in my neighborhood weren't visible under the lampposts on my 1 a.m. or later walks to the gas station for emergency Ben and Jerry's. One or two would be panhandling. I liked it better when Medicinal Ben and Jerry's. <laughs> I was vegan till she dumped me, and now I enjoy food, so it's, it's good. One or two would be panhandling graveyard shift by the cashier's window. The rest were trying to sleep where I get off the 18 coming back from her apartment, restless in the bus stop, safety grade glare. Porch light filters through my window when I turn my lamp off. I shut my eyes and imagine my losses, tears that don't fall but mist between our towns, through the window she has left open, splashing in a puddle beside her bed. A big spoon, spoon cradling her clanks to the floor, scoops my loss in its mouth, asks if she wants to imbibe the part of herself that loved me. The question gurgles and they giggle and make out and sleep and sleep. We called mine the responsible side of the bed because I controlled the lighting and got the water and phones. It was so cute. Her, la <laughs> Her lamp switched with the necklace chain so close it didn't even feel like reaching. 
I, can, I can't remember what material covered the bulb, the safety of that dart, the unknown we would face together. I turn my death trap lamp off and on each night into morning. My window must look like a hostage signaling for help when the kidnapper's gone. Thank you. Thank you, Yeah, yeah. You can feel the, the love and a little, mostly just the, the bitter. The, the classic Valentine's bitter. I'm, gonna, I'm excited Gotta to get a bitter. Excuse me. Gotta love bitter. I I'm learning, you know. It's kind of becoming my whole identity. So uh, it's fine. Uh, this yeah, this is uh, this is brand new. It's the only thing I'm gonna do with baseball, but I am gonna a soapbox about it. Uh, so glad that's the, the theme. My dad was. Uh, the biggest baseball fan that I, I've ever met, and I, I just love the, I feel like a lot of you carry that around, and it means a lot to, to uh, you know, you guys remind me of his friends, some of you, it's really cool. I was gonna sing, uh, take me out to the ball game before this, but I'll just use my, I, w I will reclaim my time. Um, <laughs> this is called What I Didn't Ask. He says, scatter the ashes of his polio at my sister's in my little league field where the Gi and where the Giants play, but now we don't know where exactly he would have wanted most. Though I believe he cared more about us re-becoming siblings, that we would do anything together after years of never was most important. I didn't ask a clarifying question like, do you think you're going to die? I didn't ask anything or scream unintelligibly or cry. I waited till he slept to get high. Brought him ice juice waiting for my edible. I didn't bathe the man I will always not be living up to. I was waiting. Didn't ask why he waited till a week or two before he thought he would end. He asked me to come over more. I was upset about boundaries. Decided in therapy to draw a line via text brevity and visiting less till he stepped back from a line. He agreed not to cross some BS about my paychecks. What I didn't ask is, are you just saying you love me? or scream, why didn't you tell me sooner with my voice, but that's what I swallowed like cheap whiskey. I don't think he said anything. I asked if he wanted to watch the news hour. Judy Woodruff said, dying death and dying tonight on the news hour. And halfway through, he went to sleep and I kept not crying. I couldn't get high. And then, got high. Yeah, I'm mostly just grieving and I'm uh, trying really hard to write poems and those, those feel like the main things I'm doing right now. Um, this is the first poem I've written uh, from the bottom to the top. You see the, the title at the bottom of the page? Ah, is it? <laughs> and uh, it's because it's about, well, it's really obvious what it's about. Anyway. Uh, prayer to what expands with me. Lemons. Spiral up toward a sugar god who won't stop leaving his kids miserable as I was, directionless on my father's doorstep after college, then plop before his flat screen bush burning disappointment. Dis Lemon zest me not here, but squirt every sacred text to smear a magnificent display of vagueness. Oh, sour sanctimonious grief stages, so prayer devolves to whatever father who art wherever. Lemon's my dad, his dad, his daddy. My dad is omnipresent since he stopped texting during ball games and living in all the ways I wish we had together and I refuse to believe I'm passing out on shrooms beneath your boughs for any reason other than this is where I lay dosing and dozing out of your kaleidoscopic bright light glaring yell oh ever proliferating citrus I never believed in heaven till I sold his condo and now I just wonder who moved in there below the evangelicals who brought him brisket when he could no longer make it from bed to kitchen, but have yet to admit we have both come this close to this abyss. Okay. Damn, I'm going to host a new work series coming up, and so I feel conflicted about burning everything there in case I don't write another new good one before the next one of those. But I think I'm gonna cheat. And just the rule is you can't have read it on a mic before, so I'm just gonna step in front of the mic. And if you guys come, um, you can call me on that. And I'll defend it. It'll feel 
bad. So where are you hosting? Yeah, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna host Nomadic Press's uh, new work series called Get Lit. It's a monthly thing, and it's um, at, it's in Fruitvale at AL Industries. Uh, the next one's on the 20th, and it's just a curated list of readers reading things they've never read before. Uh, yeah. So, but you're not on the mic, right? Thank you. Yeah, you're there are a lot. I got. I'm already coming up with all the. Right. But I'm, I'm. My time. My time. Okay. Grief strategy number five. Damn, I wish one of you could just like tell me if this is any good before I read this, but it's, it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Yeah, yeah. Encore. Encore. Okay. Okay. Whoa, a Facebook friend. <laughs> Getting deep here, right? Facebook friend. <laughs> regularly, I don't. I'm also confused because I don't usually write like short lines down. So I was reading a book doing that. So now I'm. I don't know if I can. Yeah, I don't know the words at all. <laughs> Facebook friend regularly posts messages to her dead dad, like he might be stalking her feed from the ether. I don't think she believes oh. in heaven, oh. just that he is free of what ailed him, other than his desire to be closer to his daughter. I bet she sort of believes he would still trade a day waiting through a molten stream to give her one heart emoji. I like to think they weren't Facebook friends in real life either. That's awful, huh? I told her you're gone and I grieve vicariously through these posts and that seems a stretch if I parse particulars, but I've never meant anything more. I want to tell you so many simple things. I've never felt so small. Or you, when I look to the stars and it's overcast, but I close my eyes and hope you hear the simple things I tell you in my head. I want to honor you, Dad, I'm so lonely. Please say something wise. Please just explain sports. I love you. I'm lucky. I'm glad you're free of that body, but I would endure anything to be small and in your arms or to know these words reach your smile. Okay. Um, let's lighten it up. This this is a little heavy for me, at least. Maybe y'all feel light. I'm I'm feeling a little heavy. Yeah. <laughs> um. So the, an albaid. Uh, everybody, anybody written an albaid? It's it's a it's the morning song poem. Oh. But I don't. Some, frequently, I can't fall asleep, and the morning is kind of a debatable thing for me because I'm like, what if I didn't have a night technically? If it's yesterday, you know. Um, so this this is called insomnia al bade. Um, <clears throat> I fall asleep if I fall. Cramped in a cradle on a thin branch at the top of my fruitless tree, I dream I wake as anyone else. I dream I wake with anyone, I slur self-pity spells, lonely, loathing, lonely, lonely, a squirrel. Acorn bits expectorating from its buck teeth informs me I sound like nut gnawing. Whoa, that sounds sexy AF. I respond to a squirrel. And as such confirm, I am dreaming, dreaming and free of real repercussions, so I'm all, all squirrels are stupid AF. As if a dream squirrel won't take offense and bite and that won't hurt worse than real life rabies. I'm such a foresightless pile of deer droppings. I cry out into my subconscious forest as the squirrel nuzzles my cheek, which is truly terrifying, until it whispers, I do feel like a pile of tear shit, often really. It's getting intimate AF. I listen to our breath dance, my languid relaxation technique with squirrels machine gun palpitations until I snap. You haven't felt dung about dung. This dream's probably been going 10 minutes. You've existed less than most bugs. Squirrel shrugs. I press, what's this in a tree with the squirrel nonsense? Why aren't you my dad in his TV chair explaining the infield fly rule for the hundredth time when I'm 12? And he's never going to stop having polio, but not die, squirrel. I want to wake up and live in a way that seems to conjure his smile. Okay, but we'll also to feel rested, and this is not how restful dreams go, so play mini cello, please, some pain, lol, oh, be that barista I can never seem to ask out right before I try and write about being pathetic, or my ex, 
Squirrel bats its pretty lashes and scoffs like the entire real world. I swat at it. Stop looking at me like I'm nuts. You cannot eat my feral sadness. Dream vermin squirrel scurries down trunk, probably out of earshot, but I keep rambling. Am I rambling? Is it morning yet? Am I boring, you fancy rat? Am I mourning the right way? What grief stage is subconscious screaming at a squirrel right ahead? Am I awake? Wake me as a boy, like dad overjoyed at my existence so long as it didn't make him late. Or a young man by my ex by accident looking out from our last ever love sex the second her bra strap snap when I still believed in balance of what's missed and yet to come and that eventually I wouldn't want this much to escape. So I'm gonna say I didn't introduce that long enough, but I thought like five minutes of talking about it beforehand was probably right. <laughs> Uh, am I okay? I got okay, yeah, four, four more. Yeah, yeah, four minutes. <laughs> four, 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 four. <laughs> Just so. All right, all right, cool. Um, this is real quick. Uh, Dad removing my hand from his shoulder on the drive to the hospital as a metaphor for when I bring him his glass of ice water and say good night, like I love you, but not I love you. For how talking could feel like riding a top flight bicycle with flat tires. For texting, our defense is improved instead of, why don't we come over? For the primordial intimacy of men watching sports on television. For saying the same thing whenever he asks what's new. Nothing. For how weird the only time he rode in his own back seat already was without touching. For the over-anxious anesthesiologist stuttering introduction in pre-op. For the nonchalance of my dad gasping, I'm just catching my breath. For his Chicago roots and my Bay Area blossom. For the start and stop walking with him from his minivan to the nearest object to lean on. For his corporeal clunker heaving exhaust rather than letting his son tow him in a wheelchair. For the casual nostalgia I inhale in his driver's seat now and the isolation that comes with ignition. For handling oxygen equipment so he could go out when I just wanted to hold him. For working as a caretaker for quadriplegics to help people without our baggage. For the baggage that ships itself and unpacks me naked on either side of any boundary I set. For how hard it is for me to cuddle after sex. For my violent response to the only time I saw him and mom kiss. For how by violent I mean depressed. For how by touch his shoulder I mean exist. I think I got uh, time for one more? Yeah, yeah. All right, you gotta pick the poem. I got two titles and just tell me what sounds uh, interesting. I'll say Breaking the News is a revision of the one I started with the first time I was here. So there's that. It's, it's a lot better. It was, I had just written it the first time. The other one, I don't mean to come off as partial. partial. I just want it to be a group vote or whatever. Group vote. What I think my housemates think of my suicide hotline calls. Oh, oh boy, that's a tough one. Let's go. I like the second one. Okay, first, raise your hand for the first one. Anybody? Raise your hand for the second one. I don't know. It looks like the second one. The second, if the suicide calls is way lighter, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't sound like it's, it's way lighter. Right? Yeah. Um, all right, what, my, what I think my housemates think of my suicide hotline calls. <laughs> Tally one under the reasons I'm glad the landlord isn't renewing the lease call. Just don't do it before we move out, buddy. What do you mean you don't feel supported by anyone? I listen to everything you're telling this hotline in the kitchen twice, twice, and you're such a dick even when I'm supporting you. My name's not underwear. Wait, are you being nice to the volunteer? Was I not a volunteer in the kitchen? Do you think I'd go for there for incendiary updates on the pie chart of your depression? How big that my dad died versus my ex still hates me. Slice disparity is going to be this evening while you insult me? No, I bake pie because I am awesome and my life is good. Wait, shh. Wait, stop. I can't have the transcendent intercourse our perfect long-term relationship warrants, babe. What do you mean, babe? You know, he's talking with the suicide hotline. Uh, babe, I don't know that. How would you know that? 
<laughs> silent. Hear that? Totally silent. Exactly, babe. When he's talking about killing himself, some of the collective life force or chi of the house drains. I go, when? Anyway. Oh, you're so attuned to the universe and compassionate for your housemate's death wish, babe. Maybe I am. Even your erectile dysfunction turns me on, babe. <laughs> babe. Yeah. What erectile dysfunction? Oh, babe. Please leave your room. I'm worried I'm going to open the door on your corpse in a week. Whenever you do come downstairs, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I feel like an asshole, but more than hang in there or whatever. I just want to say it's draining. I want to yell it at you. It's draining feeling like, like an asshole in my home. Knock, 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 knock. Hey, Abe, I'm a, you want something from the liquor store? I'm on the suicide hotline. Oh, cool. Thank you, though. This is Stoner at the end of the hall for sellout techie by the bathroom. Copy. Stoner sellout techie copies. Copy. Roger that, techie. I have picked up a call that sounds like your typical hotliner. Copy. Copy. It's better than Atlanta. You watch Atlanta, Stoner? Nah, it's good. Hella. And Abe's, I don't think I'm doing bad enough to call, but I just have to tell somebody I'm not going to, but I want to. Does that make sense? Routine is better. Copy. Not sure I can copy that, Techie, because being that I find the calls themselves kind of banal and I haven't seen Atlanta over. Then why did he bug his room, Stoner, if it's banal? Over. I just like using walkie-talkies. Hi. I once walked in on my father pleasuring himself. I, I don't remember the uncomfortable look he gave, only running from it. I ran sprints up the hill near our house trying to sweat out the toxicity of my hero's hidden desire. I was oblivious to what my sweat contained, but I now suspect a simple emotional swab in my socks would have revealed embarrassed pity with traces of relief at his relief I interrupted. I think my housemates feel a very watered-down version of that sweat if they hear me make the calls. I don't know, that's what I'm ending on. I hope you like it.